So asset utilization. So we're going to wrap this up now because some of this we've talked about already. But you know, start starting here, you want to increase, I call it the velocity, the turnover of those assets, right? The more sales you can generate per dollar of, invest, of, of assets, which is the dollar of invested capital, the more returns you're going to create. So long as the sales are profitable, right? You can't give away the margins. But, but a measure of efficiency of a company is in its asset turnover. How many dollars of sales can we drive per dollar of invested assets? Okay. So where do you look? Receivables, inventory, total working capital, and fixed asset. I call it hurdle rate analysis. Look, there, I have so many cases where I could tell you where, you know, um, it's really kind of funny. People in construction, some of those owners, they like to buy big pieces of yellow equipment, right? <laughs> Manufacturing people, they like to buy the latest and greatest lathe and stuff. Um, everybody likes to have nice cars. Uh, but, you know, companies have certain styles to them about, you know, they want to, they buy, oh, we need this, we need that. And my experience is those decisions about investing in fixed assets, people don't understand how significant they are in, in affecting the returns on capital. You know, the best manufacturing companies, I'm thinking of one that I work with which will remain nameless, it's not huge, their rate of return on capital is so gigantic because they are great at keeping their machines maintained. I mean, for them to buy a brand new machine, it better, it's not about having the latest and the greatest, it better produce on paper clear increases in productivity or they don't buy it. And they don't care that they have older stuff because they keep such great care of it. They've got great mechanics on how to maintain all their stuff. And they're just really cautious. It takes them a lot to get to the point of spending a dollar on a new machine. But I have other clients that have a floor full of the latest stuff. And I'm not quite sure that they really know how to make it efficient with all the computer stuff. And are they really getting the most utilization? How many ships are they running off of it? Um, so there's an analysis here for every company. All I'm saying is you should have a hurdle rate. If you think that the risks associated with your business is at 20%, you should have a hurdle rate greater than that to take on a new project that's large, right? You're trying to create returns. When you look at buying the machine, you got to do an analysis of whether, what is it going to do to productivity? Are you going to take people out of the mix? What's it going to really do to drive net returns? Not because it's the latest and greatest, but what is it going to do to your cash flow? And if it, the math doesn't prove, that says you shouldn't do it until the math proves. And that's what I was talking to Ken about. Bob Carnival is tough on that. He is tough and demanding. And he's always been that way, and he still is. But their returns on invested capital are huge because they keep figuring out how to use their stuff without letting it get to the point that it's run down or anything, that it's a risk. They are very conscious about making sure that they get the most out of what they have. So it's very important. So the idea here is you don't really want to have to rely on debt to fund your inefficiencies. Debt is necessary. You can't really get leverage in growing your business without using debt. But don't use debt to fund inefficient activities on the top part of your balance sheet. That's a waste. It's a waste of money in terms of interest cost, and it's ultimately a waste of the value because those debtors have a claim against your enterprise value, right? So use debt wisely. <clears throat> 